What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. So AMD recently launched their Ryzen 3 lineup, which is a budget oriented CPUs positioned to compete pretty much with Intel's Core i3 family. And uh, we're gonna be taking a look at two of the new SKUs today. Actually, the only two SKUs that are currently available within Ryzen 3, the 1200 and the 1300X. The 1300X being priced at $130 retail and the 1200 slightly lower at 110. Spec wise, they're very similar to each other. They're both native quad cores with no SMT, so there's only four threads on each chip, um, and they both have the same 65 watt TDP. Where they really differ in terms of specifications is the base boost and XFR frequencies that they ship with, with the 1300X, of course, being slightly higher. Um, of course, I was able to overclock both of them to 3.9 gigahertz, no problem, without touching the uh, V core voltage in any way, so that's really nice. Um, so, one of the things we're going to be looking at today is whether or not there's any sort of in game performance difference between the 1200 and the 1300X, in case you were curious. Uh, about Ryzen 3 and, and interested in purchasing one of those chips, is the extra $20 worth it for 1300X if you're primarily gonna be using these chips for gaming? We'll be taking a look at that, but primarily the focus of today is to see how much GPU horsepower these chips can actually handle before we hit a CPU bottleneck and you get hit with essentially heavy diminishing returns. Um, obviously, if we paired a GTX 1080 Ti with, this, with these you know, sub $150 CPUs, theoretically that would cripple our GPU's performance so much to the point where it wouldn't even be worth the premium price that we're paying for it. So we're going to be taking a look at six different cards today, six different graphics cards being paired with both the 1200 and the 1300X. So it should be pretty interesting. We've got a pretty nice lineup um, going from the MSI GTX 1050 Ti, the Asus Strix RX 570, a PowerColor Red Devil RX 580, a GTX 1060 Founders Edition, GTX 1070 Founders Edition, and lastly, an EVGA GTX 1080 for the win. A very nice range of current gen graphics cards, all of which will be running overclocked for today's tests, including both of our CPUs. Uh, those are each gonna be running at 3.9 gigahertz, so an identical frequency, again, giving us a nice apples to apples comparison to see if there really is any uh, performance difference in games between these two chips. Uh, other testing hardware that we've got on the board here uh, include an Asus Prime B350 Plus motherboard with the latest driver, I'm sorry, BIOS, uh, that was just updated a couple days ago to the latest version. Uh, we've also got eight gigs. Uh, it's a dual channel kit of uh, Ripjaws 5 uh, DDR4 at 2933. It's actually natively a 2800 kit, but I overclocked it in the BIOS to 2933. That's running stable. We've also got uh, a Hellfire M.2 uh, SSD NVMe drive uh, from Patriot, as well as this HX 750 watt power supply from Corsair. It's actually outside of the case right now because the power supply that's in there doesn't have quite enough wattage uh, to drive the higher end graphics cards. It's definitely an eyesore, but it shouldn't affect our results today. We'll be testing five AAA titles at 1920 by 1080. That's the only resolution we're testing today just to help us spot any CPU bottlenecking that might occur. We'll also, of course, be using the latest drivers from both GPU camps. So on that note, let's go ahead and take a look at our benchmarks. Diving right in with Ashes of the Singularity, we can see our Ryzen 3 processors scale pretty nicely all the way up to the GTX 1060, at which point anything past that results in a massive CPU bottleneck and we pretty much don't get any additional performance, even though you're forking out quite a bit more cash for a GTX 1070 or 1080. Ryzen 3 seems to pair really nicely with the GTX 1060 here, giving us a 27% boost in average frame rates over the GTX 1050 Ti and the RX 570. You can also see here that there's virtually no performance difference between the 1200 and the 1300X when paired with the same GPUs. And we'll see if this trend continues in the other titles. In Doom, we see some nice incremental scaling from our entry-level GPUs, and then a whopping landslide with the GTX 1060 scoring over 66% higher performance than the GTX 1050 Ti at 120 frames per second. Additionally, unlike Ashes of the Singularity, there's still some performance to be had here above the GTX 1060. You can see we've actually scored 21% higher with the GTX 1070 over a 1060 when paired with either Ryzen 3 CPU, until eventually we get stonewalled by the GTX 1080 as we see no additional performance increase at that point. As a little side note, we are testing Doom in OpenGL, which might explain why the GTX 1050 Ti is edging out the RX 580 and 570. Um, if we were to switch over to Vulkan, perhaps we might see the tides turn, but uh, that's a, of course a topic for another video. Here again, we're seeing very little performance difference between the Ryzen 3 CPUs, regardless of which GPU we're pairing with them, whether it be on the low end or high end, uh, it seems like the 1200 is giving the 1300X a run for its money when it comes to gaming performance. 
GTA 5, a heavily CPU intensive game, shows us results similar to what we saw with Ashes of the Singularity with the GTX 1060 seeming to be the highest graphics card we should be pairing with Ryzen 3. Anything above that just becomes an utter waste. The GTX 1060 performs 19% better on average than the RX 580 and the GTX 1050 Ti. In Metro Last Light, we see some impressive gains with the RX 570 performing 35% better on average than the GTX 1050 Ti, and then of course the RX 580 outperforming the RX 570 by about 8.4%. The GTX 1060 outperforms the RX 580 by a very slight margin. Of course, this isn't an indication of a CPU bottleneck by any means because these cards are just naturally around the same performance uh, when given a strong CPU. Of course, when we get to the GTX 1070, we're only outperforming the much less expensive 1060 by about 5%, and this equates to some serious diminishing returns when you factor in the price difference between these two GeForce cards. Finally, in Watch Dogs 2, we see some pretty nice scaling going from the 1050 Ti to the RX 570 to the RX 580, the 580 performing 16% uh, better on average than the RX 570. We've also got a 7.5% bump with our GTX 1070 over the GTX 1060, which uh, isn't quite as slight as we saw in Metro, but still not really enough to justify spending that much more on a GTX 1070. On average, it seems the GTX 1060 and the RX 580 are about as fast as you want to go when it comes to pairing a GPU with Ryzen 3. Of course, there are going to be exceptions like Doom, where a GTX 1070 is going to provide a significant performance benefit over something like a GTX 1060, but those instances seem to be few and far between, and if you really want the best bang for your buck, and you're going to be playing a variety of games, I would say keep it to a GTX 1060 or below. We're seeing some pretty solid performance, uh, even all the way down to the GTX 1050 Ti. Of course, these are AAA titles, they're very demanding as is, and still Ryzen 3 paired with a sub $150 GPU is able to keep its head above water in most of these titles, assuming you're willing to sacrifice a bit of eye candy. On a final note, it appears that when clocked at the same core frequency, there's little to no performance difference in game between the 1200 and the 1300X. Based on these results, it seems to make more sense to just go for the 1200 over the 1300X, pocket that extra 20 bucks, or put it towards a faster graphics card in your system, for example, uh, and at the end of the day, you'll still be getting pretty much the same results across the board, again, if you're gaming. Uh, I can't really speak on behalf of other tasks besides gaming because that's all we're testing today, but if if that's all you're doing with your system, then the 1200 seems to be a great bang for the buck option and actually really seems to be the better buy over the 1300X when it comes to price to performance. So there it is guys, overall Ryzen 3 is stacking up to be a pretty solid contender in the budget desktop CPU space, and I'm honestly looking forward to testing it straight against some Core i3 products in the very near future, so stay tuned for that. Just to quickly re reiterate, if you're just gaming, I would suggest going with a 1200 over a 1300X, simply because from the results we're seeing today, there simply is just no performance difference between each of those chips as long as you're overclocking your 1200. You can get it to, again, 3.9 very easily without even touching the voltage. It's super Super easy, it takes two seconds in the BIOS to do so, uh, and you'll save 20 bucks at the end of the day. Additionally, I wouldn't pair anything faster than a GTX 1060 or an RX 580 with Ryzen 3, regardless of which chip you're going with. Uh, anything past that point, you're pretty much going to be spending a lot of money for very little performance benefit in the majority of games. So hopefully that clarifies some things, and uh, hope, hopefully you don't mind how brief and to the point this video was. I tried to keep it short because, uh, life update alert, I'm actually in the process of moving every tech thing that that I own into a new studio. I'm actually gonna be moving it with wifey sauce tomorrow. Actually, take a look at this. Take a look, take take a look. This is my product shelf that's usually just, you know, stacked to the ceiling with products. It's it's almost virtually empty. Uh, let's see what's going on over here. Let's see what, uh, what wifey sauce is up to in the living room. Whoa, hey, how's it going? Oh, there's a cat. You look like I just walked in on you, like, doing the nasty or something. You look so guilty. What did you do? What have you been up to? You little scamp. So you can see it's just utter chaos right now. Oh, I'm glad she's uh, enjoying herself while, while she's working. Um, but she's been packing up stuff pretty much all day. Uh, wow, look at those boxes over there. 
Holy moly. Um, so we've got a lot more work to do and it's gonna be really exciting though once we're all moved in. There will be a vlog, a moving vlog coming very soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that as well. I haven't done a vlog in a while, so that should be fun. Until then, I'm gonna get out of your hair now, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can also check out Bitwit Ultra, my ad-free early access channel for a buck 50 a month. The first two weeks are completely free and you can back out any freaking time. Wow, I've learned to say that very fast. That's impressive. Uh, but thank you so much again for watching. Love you all. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.